We'll be recapping the chaotic fallout between Errol Spence and Terence Bud Crawford after their rematch was unexpectedly canceled. There's a ton of speculation, controversy, and trash talk around why this mega sequel fell apart. We're gonna break it all down right now and discuss what's next for both guys. So strap in because we have a lot to unpack here. To catch you up real quick, last November, Spence and Crawford finally met to decide who'll become the undisputed welterweight champion. In a tense battle, Bud's slick offensive skills prevailed, clearly outpointing Spence over 12 rounds in front of Errol's home Dallas crowd. Despite being outclassed, Spence remained kept demanding an immediate rematch and wanted to negotiate with Crawford's camp. Both guys were down to run things back quickly in 2023 and settle the debate once and for all. With the first fight so tactical and close on the cards, demand for the sequel was through the roof. But just a few weeks ago, a massive curveball dropped that threw the rematch into chaos. News broke that Errol Spence suddenly needed career-threatening eye surgery on a serious detached retina that could leave him visually impaired. It was a shocking and ominous development no one saw coming. At first, boxing media and fans rallied around Spence, wishing him a safe recovery. But it didn't take long for skepticism to build regarding the legitimacy of the procedure and timing. Namely, it was revealed Spence didn't actually suffer a fresh injury. He instead required surgery to fix a long-existing cataract in his left eye. This surprised many, considering Errol is just 32 years old, extremely rare for someone so young without other conditions. So when word got out it was an overdue cataract procedure unrelated to fighting, theories began swirling. The main accusation is that Spence was ducking the rematch with Crawford under the guise of this vision surgery and purposely waiting till after losing to Bud to address the problem and stall for time. The conspiracy picked up steam when Spence attempted to justify the cataract's sudden appearance and convenient timing. He suggested the vision issues were actually present during his first fight with Crawford, impairing his performance that night and ability to see Bud's shots. Spence stated, It's been past due, was covering my eye. Why do you think I got hit with so many jabs and hooks? He essentially wants people to believe the cataract was already worsening his vision in the lead-up to Crawford, and he lost simply because he couldn't see Bud's punches coming. Forgetting the fact it's on video of Errol claiming 2020 vision at peak condition pre-fight. But beyond lying about or exaggerating the cataract's role, most suspect this severe vision issue would have turned up in Spence's stringent medical evaluations before clearance to fight. Crawford himself called BS, posting on social media, quote, Last I can recall, we definitely get our eyes checked before every fight. I'm just saying any boxer would know that. But casual fans will say and make up anything. Bud ain't buying the fake vision problems excuse for a minute. And neither does top boxing eye specialist Dr. Ashley Puckerin, whom I had on for insight. She explained that developing advanced cataracts rapidly like Errol did at just 32 is basically unheard of without major trauma, severe diabetes, or other illnesses Spence clearly doesn't have. Essentially, she believes it's extremely likely the cause of Spence's cataract isn't some new degenerative condition, but accumulated eye trauma from punches absorbed specifically from the Crawford fight just months ago. She thinks Bud's fists hitting Spence's eyes over 36 minutes could have easily triggered the sudden vision change. And you realize what that means, right? If, in fact, Errol's cataract resulted directly from fighting Crawford, his vision had to be pristine entering the matchup because they don't let you fight championship bouts impaired like that. The commissions would have never licensed Spence to face Bud if his left eye was already that bad off pre-fight. So between the shady timing, Crawford's clapbacks and doctor analysis picking this apart, it seems like Errol might be scrambling for a way to save face and buy time rather than just admit Crawford exposed some weaknesses to tighten up in the rematch. Because let's be real, it's not just the one-sided loss itself in front of his hometown fans that hurts. But even worse for Spence's ego is that for over a year, he relentlessly called out Crawford online to force this fight into existence, poking the bear and daring Bud to face him, trying to manifest this fight into reality through his sheer will and trash talk, only for Crawford to calmly answer that call in a legacy-making night for Bud, picking apart the vaunted Errol Spence piece by piece for 12 rounds in a way we've never seen before. It was a clear victory. And now, just months later, with revenge on his mind, Spence suddenly has this eyebrow-raising injury that medical experts say was most likely caused by Crawford himself in their first fight. I mean, this just keeps getting shadier and shadier the deeper we dig. 
So while we hope Errol has a speedy recovery moving forward, it seems like he might have pulled a fast one to skip the rematch, knowing Bud likely scores it more decisively the second time. All while trying to save face and shift blame instead of holding the L graciously so they can run it back fairly. Because of that confident villainous persona Spence puts on about wanting all smoke with top welters, that took a major credibility hit, catching the ugly beatdown versus Crawford's slick boxing style. And now, ducking the sequel lays that even more bare rather than risk looking worse off a second loss. Meanwhile, Crawford remains radio silent, barely addressing this drama since he already knows the truth. This wasn't some new eye injury for Spence. As Bud bluntly tweeted, I've heard it all now, Errol Spence. Crawford knows he survived the boogeyman persona Spence created through intimidation and talking recklessly for years. But when they finally match skills, Bud exposed holes in the armor, and now Errol is scrambling to delay the revenge match, knowing stylistically it's always going to be a nightmare fight for him. So that's where we stand now. The rematch is officially cancelled as Team Spence claims a 6-9 month recovery, essentially ruling out any chance they fight again this year as Bud moves forward, securing bigger paydays knowing he conquered the Errol Mountain. And look, Spence says he ain't retiring and still has gas left in the tank even after two straight losses to the crawford Hugus duo that dominated him. But it's fair to wonder if we ever see vintage Errol Spence regaining form after such a crushing defeat. Crawford wasn't just some random contender, he was Spence's white whale, his obsession. The fight Errol clamored after for years manifests through his non-stop trolling and demanding Bud face him, only to fall flat versus Crawford's elite adjustability that puzzled and shut down Spence entirely. That does permanent damage to a fighter's psyche. For Bud's part, it's just another dangerous name crossed off the list. With Spence's stock diminished, Crawford remains undisputed king, staying busy knocking off top welters until a new clear contender arises. Keith Thurman seems to be the leader in the clubhouse to fight Bud next, but Crawford's in the driver's seat choosing who he wants. All right, guys, that's a full rundown on the chaotic fallout of Spence versus Crawford 2 falling apart. Let me know who you side with and whether Errol was playing dirty avoidance tricks due to fear of Bud. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that yet. Also, press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Till then, see ya!